see that as a concept. As I said earlier, let's go back to World War II. Let's see how it was done then. Let's use the template of a war we won and examine how we're prosecuting this one. No, no, we have to find the evil. something in the air, but it's not on the airwaves, and we have got it together. There are people in the streets. You know, at the very onset of Oil War II, there were already more people on the streets protesting than there were at the height of the Vietnam War. Yeah, there's something in the air, all right, but it's not on the airwaves. If you put a half a dozen JCs in Cincinnati on a street corner waving yellow ribbons, Fox News acts like it's a Republican Woodstock. And they're all singing, by the time we got to Fallujah, we were half a million strong. But you put a million people on the streets, they're going to build a fence around you and call you a protest zone. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I've got to beware It's time we stop Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down We like to look at Vietnam through the soft focus of Hollywood took the blood of war and turned it into rose-colored glasses. We see thousands of beautiful semi-naked 20-somethings putting daisies in the barrels of M16s. Country Joe McDonald singing one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Sure, it makes for a spectacular video. Sometimes I see these images and I want to go running through the streets saying, why don't we do it in the road? But I know better. When the first American troops went to Vietnam in 1964, there was barely a soul on the streets. But people were already singing, I ain't a marching anymore, and blowing in the wind. These songs were being released on major record labels. Mega hits would follow. Today, we have more people on the streets than there were then. Yet, there is not a single hit song on the radio. Tell me, how could this be? jumping on a bandwagon that was made possible by the people in the streets. Yet right now, there are more people on the streets than there were then. But you have to think twice before jumping on any kind of bandwagon for fear it might be a paddy wagon bound for Guantanamo Bay. If you speak the truth on national TV, your show's going to be dropped. Regardless of the ratings, just ask Bill Maher. A show does not need an audience. 
it needs sponsors. And that's the difference, because the 60s protesters, they were brought up with the brand loyalty of the 50s. And you can't blame them. Naturally, those kids queued up to buy all kinds of groovy mod gear and wear your love like heaven cosmetics. But today's protesters, they don't buy anything. They don't shop at the Gap. I wonder if you can. They boycott Coca-Cola. No need for greed or hunger. They run Walmart out of town. A brotherhood of man. Hell, they won't even go to Starbucks. Because before the Berlin Wall fell, we Americans loved to talk about how it was the Soviet Union that would only broadcast the songs of the state. And out the guns and ammo. And we Americans romanticized that it was our radio broadcast wafting in from West Berlin that tore down the wall. Yet now the cell phone's in the other hand. And there is a new wall running down divided America, and it is American radio that is being manipulated by the agenda of the state, because the state has become indistinguishable from the corporation, and the corporation needs sponsors more than it needs an electorate. Yeah, there's something in the air, and it may not be on the airways, but soon, my friend, it will be the people's broadcast walking in from the Indy Media Center and Free Speech TV that tears down the wall. And this time, it's not going to be the Berlin Wall that falls. It will be Wall Street. Because the revolution is now. There is something in the air. And we have got it together.